Pause. Sorry. Have you seen it? Yeah. Okay, great. Was so, <laughs> I was not going to have you go outside. <laughs> okay. Deba? Okay. All right. For our culture deep dive, I want to talk about that movie that lots of people are talking about, Dune 2. Wow. <laughs> That's my first comment. Overwhelming. Massive. This is what cinema is for. And just the the combination of story with massive scenes and the sound in that cinema hitting you when that light or when that achievement happens, it's, it's, it's amazing. This is what cinema is for. If people are saying that cinema is dead because of streaming, Dune 2 is one of the examples that says this is why you want to have cinema. The director is really a favorite of mine and my wife's. We're massive fans, especially of Arrival, that movie. If you haven't seen that, super great movie. I really like the idea where it was a show, not tell, right? And that's one of the right the rules for movie writing. Show, don't tell. Instead of having exposition characters saying, you look sad, show someone sad. You know, instead of this is important, show that it's important, you know? And that's what the movie showed, where all of the high points weren't things being said or like aggrandizing speeches, but they were literally something was happening that was worth filming, that was worth watching. So super loved the movie. I want to get into, and spoiler alert, massive spoiler alert. I want to say it again, spoiler alert, all right? But one of the themes in the movie is the idea of a Messiah, a promised one, a chosen one. And the concept in the movie, it shows how, you know, is, is he really the Messiah or is it a manufactured, manipulated, deceptive kind of Messiah? That's the question. The concept of the movie is there is this chosen one who has been promised. But what the people in that culture, the Fremen culture, don't know is that that promise was planted by this secret Illuminati-like organization called the Bene Gesserit. And so the whole movie delves into these ideas. I didn't realize like such a sci-fi movie would be so religious. It had so many religious themes, like religious ceremonies, prophecies, fulfillment, interpretations of prophecies. And it would actually lead to a holy war. And that holy war, you can see, is manipulated because the Fremen are poor. And that's just... Oh, gosh, you know, that's the amazing thing about sci-fi and fantasy, right? The idea is I'm caught up in this new world, this other world, and yet the way they deal with the issues in that world sheds light on our world today. There's a reason why cults flourish among people who are disadvantaged because they're willing to believe in that person better than to tolerate their current level of existence. So if in the movie, Paul Atreides, the... Lisa al Gaib tells them, go on a holy war. Great. That's better than what we're doing now, scrounging around that there's no water here. That's the only way we can live. So that's the, the idea behind it. And I wanted to point out, because I'm willing to bet, there's someone out there who looks at that movie and says, see, that's what makes all religions false. See, that's what makes all messiahs false. They inevitably lead to a holy war. And then they'll do something like this. They'll say, see, look at that. Jesus was a pretty good person. But then look what happened. People believe in him and then you have the crusades. Never mind, those are a thousand years apart. Those events you're describing are a thousand years apart. But I want to point out how while I love the movie, and it's true that people can manipulate and they manipulate prophecies and signs and symbols. And they, they manipulate people who, who want it to happen, you know? That, that, that guy, the character of, uh, what's his name? That Spanish actor who oh, is like Silgard or something. He's always cheering, right, for, for Paul Atreides. Like everything Paul Atreides, it is written, as it is written, he's the Messiah. <laughs> it's just so funny. While that's true that that can happen, that's not what Jesus did. In fact, if anything, it's the opposite of what Jesus did. We've seen this in a lot of other false religions. In fact, it actually doesn't look like Christianity at all. It looks like other religions that have 
manufactured and edited and screened out the Messiah's image and then produced the holy war afterwards, the promised one. That's not Jesus though. What are the contrasts? That's what I want to point out in this segment. Paul Atreides manipulates things, right? He manipulates the way he does things. And it's still, I don't know, it's a question mark. I think it'll be resolved. Did he use Chani, Zendaya's character, too? Or did he really love her? People seem to think that he really did manipulate her. But I have a perspective from the movie that he seems to be driven by fear that if he doesn't do this, she's going to die. So maybe it's really love. I don't know. The opposite, though, is Jesus didn't manipulate things. Jesus could have manipulated things. He could have ridden the wave of popular support. He could have ridden the zealots and the people who wanted a religious holy war in his name. And he deliberately didn't do that. Also, the difference, Jesus' mother didn't manipulate things. Paul's mother does. She definitely manipulates things. She's amazing, that character in the movie. Jesus' mom, Mary, not at all. In fact, in Mark, the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark, Jesus' mother and his brothers think he's crazy. They don't believe. This isn't some well-crafted cultic scheme with generations of people manipulating things. No, it really did happen. What are the other differences? Jesus didn't lean into his followers who tried to make him a political messiah. Paul Atreides did. He needed to. He needed to, to win over the skeptics. His mom used the other women in the Fremen tribe to win over the skeptics. Jesus didn't do that. If anything, he rebuked those followers specifically, where he said, that's not my agenda. That's not my game. I'm not trying to start a holy war. I'm trying to establish a kingdom. If there's one part that's super interesting in Matthew 11, John the Baptist I mean, if there's any, like, Silgard for Jesus, right? The one who's always going, he's the Messiah, he's the Messiah. He was the one who said that about Jesus. John the Baptist in Matthew 11 is in jail for doing the right thing. And the verse 1 says, he heard the news that Jesus was healing people. And for whatever reason, he sends his disciples to Jesus to say, are you really the Messiah or should we wait for someone else? There's disappointment in that voice. In that question, there's expectations that were not met. And some people say, was John the Baptist expecting Jesus to be doing more things for him? To be saving more, to be fixing more things, and he wasn't doing it. So now he's like, I don't really know if this is that guy. Can you imagine Paul Atreides doing that to Silgard? Like not fulfilling one of the prophecies? Or leaving him to suffer and say, well, Bahala, you know. And Jesus' response to John the Baptist was, I'm, I'm on the mission. I'm on the plan. Don't fall away because of offense, basically. He didn't lean into those followers. He rebuked Peter. Even when Jesus was being arrested and Peter tries to defend him with the sword, he's like, stop it. What are you doing? This isn't what I'm trying to do. Jesus didn't seek bigger stages. Paul Atreides did. That massive speech he does where he has like a, a prophetic vision on the life of every Fremen there, you know? It's like, okay, that's a massive... Jesus withdrew from those stages. In the beginning of his ministry, we see him surrounded by crowds. By the latter part of his ministry, before he gets arrested, he's meeting with just his disciples and just a smaller group even within the 12 disciples. Wow. He specifically instructs his followers not to use violence. Don't do that. The Fremen acting in the name of Paul Atreides were doing his wishes. The supposed Christians calling in the name of Jesus to do holy wars were not acting in the name of Jesus. That's a massive difference. So at the end of the day, Paul Atreides is the winner in this game of Dune. The winner of the houses, the political, the military game. But it's still the same game. It's still a game that produces death, that produces oppression, that produces violence. Just as a different person on top. But someone's going to suffer either way. Jesus didn't win that game. Jesus changed that game. Jesus said, ah, that's not my mission. 
I'm not doing a political war, a military war, a holy war. I'm establishing a kingdom where if you lose your life for my sake, you will save it. And to prove his point, he was obedient to the Father until death on the cross. And to prove him right, the Father raised him. He was raised from the dead by the power of the Spirit. And that's what produced this church. It wasn't always the most powerful among all the people of this world. No, he is not of this world. This is something totally different. And he's more powerful than this world because he was able to overcome the death that haunts everybody in this world. That's why his church was formed. That's why the people gathered around him. And that's why the people of God are not held together by violence, by coercion, by manipulation or deception. We're freely following him because we see this is a totally different game he's doing from the game of this world. So there, some thoughts I have from the movie Dune 2. Still love it. Can't wait to get into the book and read it also. Can't wait for Dune 3. Someone said it could be as long as 2027. But yeah, hopefully it comes out soon and I can't wait. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was helpful for you. If you want to continue the discussion and conversation, join us in the Telegram group. The link is in, in the description and on the screen if it's a, if it's a video you're watching. Also, if you, some of you have said, expressed interest and support, that would be really helpful because I'm, I'm just paying for this from my own pocket. We do have this uh, link. Uh, it's in the description, but we'll add to it along the way because some people have said they've had problems with that link. If this video helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps us reach other people to whom this would be relevant to. So thanks for that.